Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to weave a scarf using random skeins of yarn. If you're anything like me, you've accumulated one-off skeins, and if you're not quite sure what to do with them, weaving a scarf is a perfect use for these skeins. And I'm gonna show you how to make sure your scarf turns out even and beautifully woven, even though these skeins are composed of different materials. For the warp, I plan on using this fingering weight CVM alpaca blend I purchased in Arizona with single warp ends distributed throughout of this hand-dyed East Frisian yarn I purchased in Maine. For the weft, I'm going to use the leftover CVM alpaca along with this Gotland silk blend from Vermont. This Lopi yarn gifted to me from Iceland, and this Quince Co. yarn that's left over from a few other projects. After the warp yarn was caked, you could clearly see the difference between the yarn's elasticity is because the center hole disappeared on the CVM blend, but did not on the Frisian. This is why sampling is so important. We need to figure out if these yarns will work well together or not. I'm making a sample using Pearl and Loop Swatch Maker at eight ends per inch. Unfortunately, Pearl and Loop is closed, but there are other swatch making looms on the market. Swatching is time consuming, but I use a skewer to allow faster weaving going in one direction. I started off weaving large blocks of each yarn and then moved on to distributing the yarns in smaller chunks. I did this to give myself options. If the yarns shrunk at drastically different rates, I would be able to see this in the larger chunks of colors, and I would also be able to confirm that alternating the yarns every few picks would still work. The last thing I wanted was to weave the scarf only to have wavy edges due to different shrinkage rates. Before washing the sample, I measured the width and length, and it was about three and a quarter inch wide and four and a quarter long. After washing, all the yarns except the lopi shrunk to three inches wide. The lopi didn't really shrink and stayed at about three and a quarter inches. The warp threads seemed to work well together and they shrunk evenly to four inches. Now that I had all this information, I could do some math to create a gradient scarf with striping transition areas. I've written an entire blog post on how to do this with your own yarn, which is linked below. My plan was to create a symmetrical gradient scarf with about seven inches of black yarn at either end followed by 20 inches of gray yarn and then 20 inches of white yarn for the center of the scarf. The transition area between colors would be about six inches. I'm not going to cover the entire warping process but I do have another YouTube video that covers it which is linked above. Warping just one end in a different color was quite tedious as I needed to pre-cut the green yarn, then tie them in near the heddle and the peg. Once this was done, I could wind the warp, making sure the tension was even across all warp ends. My tension was wonky since I was constantly stopping and tying different yarns onto the warp, but using a surgeon's knot at the end made the process easier. You simply wrap half the bundle over the other half of yarn twice and pull tight while changing the tension.
Making sure your tension is even across your entire project is very important. An easy way to do this is to simply use your hand and feel the difference between your one inch bundles. You can then tighten each surgeon knot as necessary until the tension is even across the warp. Once you're done, you can finish off your surgeon's knot by crossing the opposite half of the bundle over the other half. One last thing to do was to weave a header to spread the warp ends out and remove any final tension issues. I wove three picks of a thick yarn and beat all three at the same time, which I then repeated. If your scarf has fringe, make sure to leave enough room. My gradient scarf transitioned from black to gray to white and then back again so it was symmetrical. I mentioned previously that I've written a blog post with all the details which is linked below. A few key things to remember when you're weaving with random skeins of yarn includes weighing the yarn before you get started so you can have the yarn if you're doing a symmetrical design. Another thing to know is your picks per inch. Picks per inch is how many rows are woven in a given inch. This is important because it will determine how many inches you can weave with the yarn you have. Most of my yarn had about 16 picks per inch except the Lopi, which had about 12 picks per inch. You should measure your picks per inch before your sample is washed, but if you're like me and forgot, my after washing measurement was pretty accurate. If you're going to do a gradient transition, there's a lot of weft ends to deal with. I like to overlap my two colors near the right edge of what I'm weaving. That way, after I wash the scarf, I just need to clip the ends. You can also let the loose ends dangle off the very edge, but you'll have to weave them in later with a tapestry needle. Remember earlier when I said it's important to weigh your yarn? Well, I forgot to do that with my Quince & Co yarn, so when I got to the other end of the scarf, I had to use some Cascade wool yarn that was left over from another project. Thankfully, it didn't shrink too differently, but it wasn't a fingering weight yarn, so you can see the difference. I didn't hem stitch the scarf, but I tied knots to secure the ends. Make sure you keep your project under tension until you're ready to secure the ends, otherwise the weft will become loose. Once the header is removed, you can tie knots to secure those ends and wet finish the scarf. I use slightly warm water with power scour. Final touches include cutting the weft ends from the color change and cutting the fringe ends to length.
I ended up with a little bit of Cascade and both gray yarns left over. I did end up with a decent amount of the Lopi left as well. However, I have most of my skein of hand dyed Frisian left over, which I'll probably knit into socks. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned how to use those little scraps of yarn in your stash to create a beautiful scarf like I did. I know I'll be using the math I did again to make more scarves as I have a pretty large stash. If you'd like to see more of these videos, please subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when my next video is released. <laughs>